The next two examples we'll consider in chapter two um, are the same exact example problems that we considered in chapter one. So namely, uh, working with Antoine equation and then Maxwell Boltzmann. Um, and we'll actually have a third one, which is the linear interpolation code uh, that we looked at in chapter one as well. Um, and so basically, um, we're asked to take the Antoine problem we looked at in chapter one uh, and create a script to perform the calculations. Okay. In the problem statement, it says to generalize the script so that we have a precondition of Antoine parameters A, B, and C along with the temperature that would need to be predefined in the command window and then it would return uh, vapor pressure. Okay. And so um, rather than necessarily looking through all of the problem statement uh, in detail, right? there is a solution provided here, um, we'll just write some Antoine code in general uh, and play with it. Okay, so now I have MATLAB open. Okay. Uh, I uh, am not showing the Antoine equation. We have that from, from chapter one and, and already have a good feel for it. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a new script. Okay. And I'm going to start by saving it. And I'm going to call my script Antoine P. Calc. Okay, now if I start with the documentation, um, we will uh, calculate uh, vapor pressure of a uh, component uh, using Antoine uh, equation. Preconditions will be A, B, and C. Antoine parameters where uh, temperature is in C and tab in to make it line up, and pressure is in millimeters of mercury. Right, so remember, your Antoine parameters, even though the problem statement, they don't list units, um, the units are fixed based on the chosen units of T and P. Right? And that's what it lists here. The other precondition we'll have is we need temperature in degree C, which I'll um, assume is in a variable T underscore C. So T underscore C will be um, temperature of interest in C. As for post conditions, um, I'll have P millimeters of mercury will be vapor pressure in millimeters of mercury. And then we had looked at a number of conversions. Um, let's just return one. And let's say return the vapor pressure in ATMs. So vapor pressure in ATM. Okay. Um, the problem statement had recommended doing all different sorts of conversions and looking at different temperatures. Um, also look to the case of solving for T for given P. Um, but let's just look at this one case. We'll return two different vapor pressures. And if you can do this, uh, you should be able to do um, everything that's given there. Okay, excellent. So let's save it. And as we calculate our uh, vapor pressure using Antoine equation, just like in chapter one, um, let's start by calculating uh, log P. All right, so our Antoine equation as written uh, is log base 10 of P is equal to A minus B um, divided by T plus C. Okay. So let's first calculate um, log uh, P. Okay. And so by log P here, it's going to be log base 10. We'll get that into a second. So log P is equal to A minus B divided by T plus C. Right. And my temperature here is T underscore C. Okay. Now compute um, P sat in millimeters of mercury. Okay. So P underscore MMHG will be equal to 10 raised to the log P. Okay. So remember, um, in the Antoine equation, as it's written or provided in the text, log is log base 10. Then if I also want to compute PSAT and ATM, okay, vapor pressure in ATM is equal to vapor pressure in millimeters of mercury times my conversion factor. So one ATM is 760 millimeters of mercury. So if I save it, okay, I come down to my command window, 
are given parameters for ethanol. So A is 8.134.84. B is 1662.48. And C is 238.131. All right, so there's my precondition of Antoine parameters um, using A, B, and C. We also need the temperature in degree C. Uh, one of the reference values we're given to get it, make sure our code's working is at 380 Kelvin. So at 380 minus 273.15 uh, to get to degree C. And the problem statement, we're told or that the vapor pressure is 2,069.2 millimeters of mercury at uh, that temperature. So if I run Antoine P calc, okay, I get 2069.2 millimeters of mercury or an ATM 2.7226. Okay, great. Okay, excellent. Uh, so now uh, a couple of more things, right? So one nice thing with scripts is in the second problem, it actually asks a what if scenario does vapor pressure increase or decrease with increasing temperature? So the nice thing now with my script is I need just go back and update my temperature. Okay, so maybe let's make this uh, 500 degrees. Okay, and now I'm not going to suppress the output so I can make sure I'm within my range of that Antoine equation. So that'd be 226.85 degrees C. Uh, Antoine equation says it goes up to 243.1. We're good. So I can just reassign the temperature. So increase the temperature and then just recall my Antoine calculation. Okay. And at 500 degrees C, vapor pressure goes up to 47.7 ATMs. Right? So it's going up uh, and it's actually increasing exponentially. So vapor pressure increases with increasing temperature. Right? So just like car update, once we have this main code working, we can just keep iterating on other scenarios. Okay, Excellent. Um, also, similar to an example we had looked at before, Okay, is um, remember when I execute a script, it's as if I had just ran the lines of code one by one in my command window. So here, when I assign values to log p, log p is now stored in my workspace. All right? We call it an intermediate variable because we use it to simplify our calculation. But at the end of the day, you know, all I want to be able to provide are all, all I want to provide are Antoine parameters and temperature and return vapor pressure. I don't really care about log p. Um, and so if you're afraid about keeping log p hanging around, um, you can always clear it. So if I want to remove my intermediate variables, right, it would just be a clear log p. And this way, if I perform my calculation again, I get my answer. And log p no longer exists over here uh, in my workspace. Okay, cool. The other thing I'll mention is, um, in the problem statement, it said to hard code A, B, and C, my Antoine parameters, so it's generalizable for any fluid. Okay. But if this were, say, something you want to turn in for a uh, lab report, uh, it could be beneficial to hard code some uh, items if you're looking at a specific system. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save a copy, so I'm going to do a file save as. And if I want to create an ethanol specific version, so if for my homework or lab, I was only looking at ethanol, okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to copy my Antoine parameters from my command window. And I'm going to paste them in this new ethanol specific version. So on this line, so I'll paste them here. So now this will be Antoine parameters for ethanol where uh, temperature C and pressure, okay. And I no longer need Antoine parameters up here as preconditions. Okay, and I can even generalize this vapor pressure of ethanol. So what I just did is we created a version of our script at specific for ethanol, right? My Antoine parameters for ethanol are hard-coded. So now the only real parameters I have, okay, let me clear all my variables, okay? So 
So the only precondition we have now is my temperature in degrees C. Okay. So if I start at 380 Kelvin, okay, so that's 106.85 degrees C, and run my Antoine P calc ethanol, right? I get the vapor pressure of ethanol. Okay, cool. All right, and this is beneficial because um, it's oftentimes the Antoine parameters that I need to look up, right? And it's more so for a given fluid, I just want to change the temperature and compute the vapor pressure. So after I've looked up the Antoine parameters, I could always hard code them. Uh, if I wanted to look at, say, methanol, um, you know, I could save a copy for a methanol, or I could even just go to my generalized code and I could just say comment out ethanol uh, and type in methanol um, or other such small modifications.